Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, building a wall between the US and Mexico and making the Mexicans pay for it was one of Donald Trump's most prominent campaign promises. Yesterday, we discovered details of a phone conversation the new president had with his Mexican counterpart within a week of taking office. And that appeared to be the biggest concern was how he'd look in the press. Our US correspondent Cordelia Lynch reports. It was an undiluted promise that became a campaign applause line. We're going to build the wall and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. They're going to pay for it. We're going to have the wall. We're building the wall. We're building the wall, folks. We're building the wall. Who's going to pay for the wall? Mexico! Who? Mexico! But in a transcript of a phone conversation obtained by the Washington Post, President Trump seems to accept funding will have to come from elsewhere as he speaks to Mexico's leader. Yet he urges his counterpart to keep quiet. President Peña Nieto tells him, my position has been and will continue to be very firm, saying that Mexico cannot pay for that wall. Mr. Trump responds, but you cannot say that to the press. The press is going to go with that and I cannot live with that. You cannot say that to the press because I cannot negotiate under those circumstances. He threatens to cut off contact if Peña Nieto doesn't comply and months later awkwardly sticks to his script whilst sitting alongside him. In another intriguing back and forth with the Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, the President claims an Obama-era agreement on refugees is going to kill me. Increasingly frustrated, he abruptly ends the conversation, exclaiming, I have had it. I've been making these calls all day, and this is the most unpleasant call all day. Putin was a pleasant call. This is ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Comparing an ally with an adversary will raise alarm bells in a White House trying to stop leaks. It is no secret Donald Trump revels in a forceful approach to negotiating, but exposing what he says away from his supporters could hurt him, an unfiltered glimpse at a man who likes to control his own message. We're going to build a wall, folks. We're going to build a wall. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News, Washington. Now, the increasingly surreal world of the Trump White House got even more surreal today after transcripts emerged of phone calls Trump made with world leaders just after he entered office. Among other things, he claims he is the world's greatest person and complains about taking in refugees who wouldn't get a job with the local milk people. But with approval ratings slumping as low as 33%, Mr Trump is the most unpopular president ever. And one of his most outspoken critics is the filmmaker Michael Moore. I spoke to him earlier and asked whether, since Donald Trump has appointed General John Kelly as his chief of staff, he has somehow subjugated himself to the military. Well, yes, I think, I think he's appointed a number of generals and a number of CEOs, head, head of corporations, uh, to be in his cabinet and to run things. I mean, that's, that's who he is. That's what he ran on. That's what he stands for. And uh, that's what we've got right now. We've got an awful uh, situation. And our only hope right now, really, because we hold no power, is to basically try to discombobulate him as much as possible. He's easily distracted. He has a very thin skin. And uh, if we can just be like a swarm of bees around his head for the next couple of years, maybe we can prevent some of the damage uh, he's going to do. Well, now, um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn um, didn't win the last election here, and, and the Brexiteers are still uh, uh, pulling off uh, Brexit, so far as one can tell. You, you talked of Jeremy Corbyn as uh, leading the left out of the wilderness and into power. Uh, we're a long way from that, aren't we? Oh, you're not. No, you're not a long way from that. He's not a long way from that. I mean, I mean, he's an example of somebody, actually, again, who, who, who lost but yet won and I think was considered the big winner in the, in the Labor Party in terms of the turnaround that took place. And it's, you know, sometimes it's uh, baby steps, sometimes it's medium steps. We're in a bit of a race here, uh, Britain and the U.S., 
to see which one of us is going to get out of the situation first. So uh, I'm, I'm actually, I would put my money on, on you guys. Well, well, it would be interesting to see because uh, the truth is that Mr. Corbyn is as pro-Brexit as uh, uh, the hawks in the uh, Conservative Party. I mean, there's no question of, of him in some way leading Britain out of Brexit. Yeah, I thought you were talking in general about Labour. You're still part of Europe, but uh, maybe enough people there just don't want to be part of it. So in, enjoy your miserable life on your island. But, but it's you who, uh, earlier in our little talk now, uh, suggested that Trump, Brexit were very much the same story. They were alienation of people in the Rust Belt and people who hadn't had a look in here and there. But when I say that, like, about the Brexit states here, I think the same is true in your country, that, that you have a lot of justifiably angry former middle class, people now struggling uh, from paycheck to paycheck to get by. And, and um, you know, Brexit in your country and Trump in this country were like that Molotov cocktail that they got to throw into a system that had failed them. Thank you very, very much for talking to us. No, no please. <laughs> Right, it's never a quiet day in Washington, and in the last hour, news has broken that the special counsel investigating the Trump team's ties to Russia, Robert Mueller, has convened a grand jury that has the right to compel people to give evidence. We don't have grand juries here. John Sopel, here, uh, John Sopel is uh, here to tell us uh, what this is all going to mean. John, is this a significant development in this special counsel's uh, actions? Yes, it is significant, but let me add a couple of caveats. It doesn't mean that any prosecutions or indictments are imminent. It doesn't mean there are going to be any prosecutions or indictments. But a prosecution couldn't happen without a grand jury being sworn in. So, if you like, it is the next logical step in the investigation. That said, as you point out, it means that they'll be able to take sworn statements from witnesses, they'll be able to subpoena people and documents to the investigation. And to the very simple question, does this mean that the investigation is winding down or ramping up? <laughs> Only one conclusion. Right. It's it, ramping up. Yeah. Are, are the proceedings all in public, the grand jury proceedings? Now, this, a lot of this is going to take place behind closed doors, and what's going to happen is that they're going to kind of they're going to follow the evidence wherever it takes them. It means they've got great investigatory powers now because of being able to take people on oath and uh, compel people to give evidence. And it's being spoken about that one of the first meetings that they want to look at is this meeting that Donald Trump Jr. had with the then campaign manager Paul Manafort and Jared Kushner with those Russians apparently to get dirt on Hillary Clinton. I should say there's been some reaction uh, from Trump's legal team. Uh, the president's legal team has said the White House favours anything that accelerates the conclusion of this work fairly. The White House is committed to fully cooperating with Mr Mueller. Very conciliatory. Would those be the sentiments of Mr Trump tonight? I would guess not. I would imagine he's spitting tacks about it. John, thanks very much indeed. Thanks.